Digital. Мы создаем будущее. Я приветствую вас на юбилее компании Intel в России. 20 лет — это немалый срок. Нам кажется символичным, что отмечаем мы наш день рождения здесь, в Сколково, в месте, где создается российский инновационный центр нового типа. Intel сделал, делает и, я уверен, будет делать очень много для того, чтобы российская экономика была по-настоящему современной, инновационной. Я приглашаю на сцену Дмитрия Коноша, регионального директора Intel в России и других странах СНГ, любителя экстремальных видов спорта и моего большого друга. Дмитрий. Спасибо. Добро пожаловать в Сколково. 20 лет пролетели как один день. Мы прошли этапы большого пути, как э, говорится в известном э, фильме, в российском кинофильме. И мы начали продавать э, в России микропроцессоры 386 э, поколения в э, начале 90-х. Потом были 486 процессоры. В, э, уже в новом веке мы э, продаем и продвигаем здесь микропроцессоры нового поколения серии Core, наши флагманские процессоры. Примерно каждый второй компьютер, который продается в России на сегодняшний день, содержит в себе этот микропроцессор. И обороты компании на сегодняшний день в России измеряются девятизначными цифрами. Российский рынок, рынок обладает уникальным потенциалом. Одной из больших частей нашей работы в России являются программы социальной ответственности. Мы работаем с российским правительством над тем, чтобы трансформировать российскую экономику из экономики энергетической сырьевой в экономику знаний. По результатам первого квартала Россия вышла на первое место в Европе с точки зрения компьютерного рынка, рассчитанного на потребителей. И на фотографии здесь очень приятная для нас вещь. Это самая большая реклама с Intel Inside в мире. Yes! I'm really honored to be here today to celebrate our 20 years in Russia. It's good to be here, and I wanted to share with you our, our research and development activities in Russia to give you a feel for what we're accomplishing here and uh, how it contributes to Intel worldwide. Our activities, as Camille and Dimitri said, include 1,100 employees. Um, and in research and development, they include our research team in Intel Labs. They do a number of innovative things in, 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 in areas. And we also have a team that contributes to manufacturing. Some physicists in, in Russia contribute to our worldwide manufacturing research as well. We also have a team who's looking at Um, innovative uh, processor technology working in our uh, Intel architecture group. And then our largest team is the software developers. We have 700 of those in Russia, and they build products uh, and do uh, enable Intel's hardware technologies uh, worldwide. We also have a customer response team that works closely with high performance computing, and that's an important initiative here in Russia as well as the government's initiatives around supercomputing and high performance. And my largest engineering country is Russia, uh, larger than all of my others, uh, and it's about half of all of, the, all of the engineers that I have in the organization. I'd like to talk about what Intel's doing in terms of when we say we're the sponsors of tomorrow, what we're doing from the standpoint of our strategy to change tomorrow. And then certainly finish up with how we see Russia's leadership playing a big role and why our partnership here in Russia is so important. As a matter of fact, you know, we have today a luxury of really access anytime, anywhere. You can have a handheld device at a sporting event. You could be carrying around a nice notebook or tablet uh, and having access to information that I just showed, connection, content consumption. On average, uh, IDC says there's 24 smart embedded devices that we encounter a day. This is really what we mean about pervasive computing. It's certainly very personal, but it's also quite ubiquitous. It's really starting to unify. For many years, we would go into our business and we would be interacting with technology, and that was that technology we were using at work that we really wanted to have at home. So much of the innovation is happening in the consumer space. And now as consumers, we have all these devices and access to content and being connected to each other. And we go into work and we're demanding more at work. 
So what's happening is it's starting to unify today. And what I'm going to talk about today is in the context of cloud 2015. And you may ask, why did I pick 2015 as the date? And we feel it's far enough out that it's aspirational. And we don't have all the answers for how we're going to get there. But it's not far enough out that it's just PowerPoint I'm going to show you today. We think there's some very legitimate steps we can get to drive down the cost of services to get these next billion people connected. So I thought I'd start with uh, Intel's new vision as a company. And that is that this decade, we will create and extend computing technology to connect and enrich the lives of every person on Earth. Now, sometime around October or November of this year, we'll cross 7 billion people on the planet. And I'm not here today to tell you we're going to put a PC or a tablet or a phone in the hands of all 7 billion people. A lot of people think I'm, I'm sandbagging. Because in 2015, our goal is to add another billion people to the internet. So people that will touch the internet physically from 1.5 going to 2.5 billion people. We'll have 15 billion connected devices, connecting machine to machine, uh, people to machine, and people to people. And easily, based on the data you just saw, that'll get us to over 1,000 exabytes per year of internet traffic. Lots of data, lots of people, lots of devices, 15 billion devices. And we will fundamentally need a new computing architecture to do that. Share a little bit about um, some of the things that we're working on in the future. Um, this is uh, like Kirk, or maybe he's been here more frequently. Uh, I used to come to Russia quite frequently because I had a group that uh, did communications research in uh, Nizhny Novgorod. Um, and we were doing a couple of processor designs. I haven't been here since uh, around 2007 when we held our last IDF, and it's actually good to come back. And I feel honored that Camille asked me to come and speak about um, what's happening in the future and to give you kind of an idea of the role that the computing industry, the IT industry here in Russia and worldwide can essentially play. Uh, I've been at Intel 29 years. As uh, Tom was up here, I used to work for Tom, great boss. As he was up here discussing um, 20 years in Russia, I was trying to think about what uh, 20 years ago things were really like and uh, we uh, did our first PC motherboard uh, three years before and at the time we did that the bill of materials was two thousand dollars and bill of materials is just the components just to build the system Мы Intel. Мы